sorry, it's DJ. Hey. And uh, it supposedly resolves a few of the annoying issues with this product. So I figured we'd uh, give it a go trying to upgrade it. Now it is a bit of a cumbersome process since uh, the JYE tech uh, people who designed and manufactured this thing uh, have seemed to have disregarded the fact that the kit is equipped with a USB connector. So you do need a TTL to USB converter and a little serial cable to hook this up to your PC because there, there just seems to be nothing coming out of this USB connector even though these microcontrollers uh, supposedly have some kind of USB bootloader built in my best guess is that they've uh, disregarded that in order to save some flash in order to make all the source key stuff go into it a bit more easily and well let's just uh, go through the instructions and uh, see what they've got to offer you are given some quite clear instructions actually as to how to upgrade the firmware in the device. You are given a bit of a presentation of it, uh, why they do it the way they do it, and that the microcontroller has an integrated bootloader which you are going to use. And also tells you that you are going to need a serial converter. Now they are advertising their own little product for this. I have got one based, based on the same chipset, so it should be a rather identical procedure to do it, even though the package is a bit different. And they tell you that you're going to need some software and uh, that you're going to need the firmware hex file which you can download from the website. I've collected all this software and put it on a folder on my work PC so it should be reasonably easy to get access to. All the links to third party sites worked excellently although that can't be guaranteed for the future. But I'm sure they're going to host local copies if stuff starts falling out of date. We also give you a kind of uh, okay schematic for how to connect this thing up. Now, since you're talking about a serial port connecting this thing, it's going to be quite obvious how to deal with it uh, if you've ever dealt with serial ports before. But uh, for anyone who hasn't, uh, this schematic isn't really entirely clear since it just uh, shows you the names of the lines. They don't show you the actual pins of the converter and the device. And uh, you're, you need to use a crossover cable to connect this up, so TX on the converter goes to RX on the DSO, and RX on the DSO goes to TX to the converter, to transmit to receive and receive to transmit, and of course ground goes to ground. The actual upgrade steps tell you to short a couple of jumpers on the device, which is going to put it into bootloader mode, and it also tells you to install drivers for your chip, and this third portal link works as well. So uh, let's just uh, see if we can uh, get the software set up before we move on to the hardware and actually hooking this thing up. So here on the PC I've downloaded the uh, Flash Loader demo application which you use to actually load the software onto the DSO. I've got the hex file which is to be loaded and I've got the files for the uh, serial to USB Converter, so let's just plug that into the computer and see if we can get some software going. And it's detected, it's failed to install, so let's see if this works. I'm running 32 bit Windows on this particular machine, and everything is in Swedish since I've got Swedish localization, but that looks pretty good. And I just got little USB pop ups saying that everything turned out okay, so. We should have the driver for the serial to USB convert installed, so that seemed to go quite swimmingly. And yes indeed, if we check the device manager, we've now got a Silicon Lab CP210X USB to UART bridge at COM3, which uh, suitably is uh, the same COM port as uh, they've used in the example. So with the software installed, we need to bridge the jumpers in order to prepare the hardware for the modification. So, I've circled the jumpers on the back here, there's jumper 1 and there's jumper 2. Now they're just uh, some SMD pads that they to A603 size, so you just, you're just you just supposed to use a soldering iron to bridge those, making sure to turn the device off first. Uh, that seemed to go quite well. There you go. They should now be bridged and now 
If with what power to the device, it should no longer boot into the Assault software, but rather go straight into the boot loader. It's not so give that a shot. And indeed, it seems not to be initializing anything at all, so that's a very good sign. So let's just uh, hook the wire up uh, for this particular convert. I've made a little custom cable with some Cat5 and a couple of pin headers, N nothing fancy at all. It's not any high-speed communication, so you don't need any kind of fancy cable. Yeah, they are using 115,200 baud for the communication in the example, so it's certainly not going to run into any signal quality issues, unless you're running a kilometre wire, but why not? And that should go on there like so. And the other end goes on there like so. And the computer just made a device discovered noise, so that's a bit of an oddity. Perhaps the converter rebooted. So, with that out of the way, the next step should be to launch the ST bootloader application. So, let's see what that will do. Oh, that's an installer. Great. When did the age of Stumbler and Executables end? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't care, I want to use this software once and discard it. Okie dokie, so I was setting it up according to the instructions and that would be COM3 as we saw in the device manager, 115,200 board, data bits 8 and we cannot select that, parity even, echo disabled, timeout 5 seconds, so I doubt that makes a lot of difference, but that should be correct, so Let's go on. No response from the target. Okie dokes. Ah, it helps if you actually connect the uh, wire you made up uh, properly. I have accidentally shorted uh, 33 volts to the ground on there. Now the grounds are not the same since uh, this is running off of an isolated power supply, but the levels are going to be all wrong, so let's just try that again. Ah, it also helps if you actually connect the <laughs> why in the other end the right way around, you know, I had accidentally put it one step too far to the edge. Stupid unkeyed pin headers. Oh well, that's my fault, not uh, the DSAs. Now this screen is something the instructions don't seem to tell you about. They've apparently enabled the read protection on this one. And if you remove that, it's going to be erased in order to prevent people reading the firmware out of it. And that seems a bit risky, but uh, fair enough. I mean, this means that it seems to be communicating with the micro and you can't delete the bootloader, I don't think. Wait until full erase, the device will be reset, okie dokes. I've got no idea how long that's going to take. Oh, there we go. That didn't take too long at all. Right, let's proceed. And we should, according to the instructions, select the STM32F1 med density 64K. And it seems to have selected that for us. And everything looks really green and unlocked there, so we're supposed to just click next. And now we want to download to the device. I want, I probably want to select the file. I need to select the hex extension there. It defaults to S19, whatever that might be. And I want to copy the setting they've used, which is optimize, remove some FFs. I don't want to be removed. And verify after download. And erase necessary pages as it's selected by default. And that seems pretty okay. The device should already be, re uh, be erased since uh, we had to remove the write protection. And we're supposed to click on next to start writing, so... Here we go. We've got a TXID. Oh. <laughs> I just caused the USB failure during that download, didn't I? Oh well, this just turned interesting as it plays, we're going to find out 
whether or not uh, we can lock ourselves out of a boot loader. So let's just uh, start over. Right, it seems the boot loader is still there. And it's still the Texas has the same micro, everything's green and unlocked, so... I can remember the last settings, that's, that's a very nice feature. Good work, ST. So, let's uh, try again. TXLD is flashing very rapidly. And that looks very green and nice. And I think that would be it. So, what remains to do is disconnect all this stuff and uh, remove the jumpers. And see if it'll boot into the new firmware. Jumpers going away. Oh, I'm moving a truth. This uh, should pop up a screen saying that we're running the uh, 060 firmware. That seems to say 060 indeed. Oh, come on. Pirate a warning, seriously. Oh, that. Ugh. I don't mind them defending their product, but that's just... Ugh. Really? Do they ha This is a genuine kit. I bought this stuff of a reputable retail. Do I, am I supposed to have to deal with that kind of stuff? Uh, that's like those anti-piracy things you get in legit DVDs and Blu-rays. So that's... That's... Ugh, that just puts a bad taste in my mouth. Ugh. Bad form. Very bad form. Oh well, let's just uh, have a play around with this thing and see what differences we might have. Alright, so what changes are we supposed to actually see? Well, and I quote, Auto center trigger level to the middle of the signal amplitude when trigger level is focused and OK button is held down for 2 seconds. This is useful for quickly stabilized waveform display. Okay, let's try it out. I believe that's the trigger level, so let's just uh, move it out of the way. And hold OK for two seconds. Uh, it stopped updating and it uh, put the trigger level way down below anything useful. Let's try it again. And now it's just going insane. Am I reading that wrong? Auto center trigger level to the middle of signal amplitude. Well, that's not bloody well the middle, is it? But that's just. Uh, <laughs> Slammed it down as far as into the negative rail as it can go. And it seems to just be stuck down there. Can we actually move it away? No, it's just down there underneath the screen. What on earth? Uh, this has gone wrong. I don't think that's what they intended. Let's uh, try it again. Nope, it just uh, slams down. And uh, also put a waveform update on hold since we haven't disabled the hold functionality of the OK button while you're using that function. So, <laughs> I suppose that's a very nice thought. It's a feature which was uh, direly needed on the previous firmware, but uh, yeah, it doesn't seem to work. We'll still have to very slowly move the trigger level back towards the centre. Um, now it's starting to trigger. I still haven't solved the issue where you kind of don't know where you're actually triggering from. There's no horizontal trigger marker. Oh well, let's uh, move on to the next point. And I quote, Auto center horizontal position when horizontal position is focused and AK button is held down for two seconds. Righto. That should be horizontal. So let's just uh, very slowly move that off to the side. They should add some acceleration or something to this, make it take bigger steps because this is 
painful. More safer centres and rather than just yep, there we go. Yeah, but also pauses for wave form updating. But at least this does do what it's intended to do, unlike the trigger level. So that's a score, that's a useful feature because scrolling back and forth uh, it is just painfully slow on this thing. Mm, what's point three? Restore factory default settings when plus and minus buttons are held down simultaneously for two seconds. Fair enough. And that, uh, yeah, that resets it to the default. The screen spell, though, it doesn't move your cursor down to the default. And it didn't update the text that it did when you went down there, so... Fair enough, that works. Well enough, I would suppose, if you really mess something up in the settings and can't figure out how to get it back, that, that can be a mighty useful feature. Improved frequency measurement by using average voltage level instead of true zero volt level which was used in previous versions. A cycle counting reference. I'm not certain what that's supposed to mean, but uh, how do you turn the information on? Was it holding the select button? Yeah, there we go. So we're counting 10.01 kilohertz. Yeah, not really sure how to test this. It uh, was showing about the same before, and uh, the frequency generator should be pretty bang on 10.0000 kilohertz. It works. It's counting the frequency. This is going to get insane still if we just uh, go to the really high frequency right at the top of what it's able to display. Let's just go, go up towards a hundred kilohertz or so. It's counting hundred reasonably well, but it's jumping around a bit. This, this should uh, again be quite spot on a hundred kilohertz. Let's just see how high we can go with this firmware. I don't remember how high it went in the other one. In fact, I don't think I even tested the high end frequency response of it. So let's do a hundred kilohertz flat, two hundred, uh, that's... It is counting it right, but the display is all wonky since we're running out of the sampling speed. Oh, 210, yeah, counting it reasonably well. 220, 230, 240. Yeah, this is starting to go a bit weird. 240, 250, yeah, now it's going really weird, but it's counting it all right. 260. Yeah, we're just pushing this way out of bounds. 300 kilohertz. But they seem to have added some kind of limit to make it not count super high frequencies, which would be way out of bounds, so I suppose that's uh, reasonable enough. Let's try it a bit more of the same frequency. Let's do uh, 1 kilohertz. Yeah, that's counting all right. Let's do 1.01 uh, oh, kilohertz. 1 1.02, 1.03, 1.04, 1.05, 1.06. That's looking pretty good. For this significant digit, doesn't seem to be much to counter, but uh, let's just do uh, 1.065. Oh, yeah, well, that's. I mean, it's changing, it isn't just worthless. It's roughly right. 1.28. Well, that's not too bad, actually. Not too bad at all. We seem to have a relatively accurate crystal in this as well, since uh, it's just showing pretty much spot on. But that's not bad at all. So, what's the next point of improvement of the firmware? Fixed bug in trigger level readout error. In previous versions, trigger level reload displayed wrong value after v pass alignment was performed. Oh yeah, I think I remember now. I think the trigger level was a bit wrong and everything was just kind of a bit off once you did the hardware calibration on it, which, uh, since we cleared the micro and I don't think this has any external EEPROM. Oh, this thing is probably out of curl right now, so... I'm just going to do a calibration cycle on it, uh, and uh, we'll uh, perhaps give the trigger level a bit of an another chance, since that might be causing the very weird phenomenon where it just pops down straight to nothing.
Alright, that's copper to ground. Select the voltage position. And hold down OK for two seconds. And then it's getting weird. Uh, that's a supposedly it. Okay. So does the uh, trigger level thing work now? Well, is it still going to be broken? Was it just broken because we were at a fast time base? Right, moving it off to the side. Hey, it works now. So in order to make the uh, trigger level auto centering work, you need to perform a V plus uh, adjustment first. Fair enough, you should always do the calibration in order to have a thing in spec anyway, so that's not as bad as I initially thought. Let's just see if it works if you put it all the way up as well. Just, oh, yeah, that's proper horrible. Yeah, that, that's working okay now, so that's not too bad. I just forgot to calibrate it, so these are some pretty useful features added to this thing, I must say. Certainly works a treat now. Still has that little issue where it's jittering, jittering around. You don't really know where your trigger position actually is, or whether or not there even is a real trigger position on it. But uh, yeah, twenty-three dollars cake. You can't complain. Yeah, the trigger jitter thing is still pretty bad at the fastest time base. Oh well, it's still good enough. I mean. For, for $23, this thing has just gotten a quite a bit more useful because scrolling through the horizontal and the vertical stuff is just... Ugh. Do we actually have a centering feature for the voltage as well? Or is that just going to do the calibration? I hope this doesn't make it go weird. No, still no auto center for the uh, horizontal. So you still have to move around, you have to manually find the centre part, and I don't have a chance in hell of doing that in the camera LCD. But, yeah, all in all, DSO 138, gotten better, still a pretty good project. I would recommend it if you need a real cheap escape for low frequency stuff, I mean we're looking at 20 kilohertz now, that's pretty much still the limit of how high frequency you want to go. And hey, that's the entire audible spectrum, so if you just want to trace signals in an audio amp or something, this is probably the cheapest way to go about it. So, I hope you found that helpful. Thank you for watching. Cheerio. <laughs>